Welcome to the What You Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori Amin, will interview published authors to chat about their work, journey to getting published, and their book recommendations. If you share a passion for books and always looking for your next read, then join us. Hi, Amiko. Welcome to What You Next podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. So happy to have you here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Emiko Jean, and I live in Washington State with my partner and twins. I have three and a half year old uh, boy girl twins that I uh, call my love spawns. And I am the author of Why Books Will Never Be Apart, Empress of All Seasons, and the forthcoming Tokyo Ever After. I love this. I am so excited to chat about Tokyo Ever After. It was just like frothy. I was just telling you before that it was frothy, fun, sparkling, like just the perfect pandemic escape. So (laughs) it's it's coming at the right time. Like it's a beachy read. So Mm -hmm. I love this. So let's see. Um, Did you always want to write YA novels? Were you a YA reader or did it came afterwards and like why YA? Yeah, so I've always been, I think every writer starts as a reader. Um, I've always been a really big reader. Like I remember going with my mom to our local bookstore or the library and getting stacks of books. Like the rule was as many as I could carry and I could carry, I was surprisingly strong (laughs) for a little girl. And, um, but I actually didn't consider writing until later. So I went to college and I majored in science and then I pursued a master's degree in teaching. Mm -hmm. And part of this now that I reflect on it was because I didn't really see myself in the books I loved. Um, So there weren't, I, in fact, I don't remember reading a Japanese American author. I don't remember reading books that had Japanese American protagonists in them. And so I think without that representation, I didn't believe that writing or publishing was a pathway for me. So fast forward years and years, um, I finished my master's degree. I went into the education field and that's when I actually decided to write my first book. Um, My current job, I didn't love, I was really unhappy at it. And I kind of thought, and I started actually writing while I was working there, (laughs) like I would write while I was supposed to be doing work for them. Um, And I, uh, you know, I thought, I love reading. Why don't I try writing what I loved reading, which was young adult. Mm -hmm. Um, And I drafted my first young adult manuscript and it was terrible. It was during the, like the twilight craze. Mm -hmm. So mine of course had like werewolves and vampires and Mm -hmm. everything like that in it. and uh, that did not get me an Asian. It didn't get me any sort of representation. Um, but then my second novel did, Will Never Be Apart. And that's what landed me my agent and was published as my debut. Oh my gosh, I love this. I love this experience of like writing what you haven't seen. Like, you know, put the story that you wanted to see others to read, you know. Exactly. Yeah, and I think it's it's great that we're getting more representation, but I feel like we need more, you know? I think we just need more, you know, I think authors like you are break, groundbreaking of like, you know, paving the way for other authors to come in and keep sharing their stories. It's so important. And that absence, you know, in my, in, you know, my childhood was so formative and I didn't, looking back, I can see that now, but I didn't realize that as I was growing up that it was, there was something exclusionary about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've been asking this question to authors as, you know, is it something interesting? Like what brings you joy? Like what sparks joy for you? Like, is it something, is it writing? Is it reading? Is it something else that doesn't have anything to do monetarily, but you do it and it feels like fun? Yeah. Um, yeah, there are a few things. I mean, of course it's, um, it's writing that's, mm-hmm. um, I've never felt so fulfilled doing a job as I have being an author. Um, The other thing that sparks a lot of joy for me are my children. I'm kind of a newish mom. My twins are three and a half and um, it's just amazing to watch them grow and and see them change. And so I, I have a really good time with them. And then like the last thing that I've been, this is my recent spark of joy is I've (laughs) I've been watching, the show Younger. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but it's all about the publishing world and probably none of it is accurate, but um, I've been like devouring that. It's so fun. 
Oh my gosh. Yes. I feel you. I feel, it's like, it's, it shows like New York. I lived in New York now um, 14 years and I'm like, that my apartment did not look like those lofts in Brooklyn. You know? no. <laughs> and I was like, and the, the, the clothes, the heels, the stuff, the polishing world. I'm like, just yeah. it does not look like that at all, but it's just so frothy and fine. Yeah. There's an escapism element to it. And I, um, so I was like, I had my, second COVID shot on Friday last week and I was in bed all day on Saturday and I just watched like the first and second season and it's just a beautiful kind of show to watch like it's like I said there's an escapism element to it it's really fun to watch it's easy and I was like (laughs) they have like they always have such beautiful clothes and like cute hair and stuff and I was like ordering headbands on Etsy (laughs) So I got into it and that's I got a question. Which team are you in? Team Dodge or Team Charles? Oh yeah. Okay. So I was in Team Charles. Um, but I do really like Josh. It's hard. I'm not sure. It's okay. (laughs) You gotta have a different preference. I I think I'm going Team Charles. I feel like it's like a grown up, you know. Mm -hmm. Although I have to say, I love reading about older women dating younger men. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Like yeah. any, any books for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're, I like, I think it was like, you know, I'm 40 and I'm, I'm turning 40 this year. I'm like, so if I date like a 20, 25 year old, like what would it look like? <laughs> you know? um, yeah, I agree. I think for Liza, Charles is probably the better choice. Yeah. But you know. It was just fun. <laughs> you know? He is fun and so sweet. He's so sweet in the show. He really is. Yeah. So sweet. Yeah. Um, so what has been the process of writing during the pandemic? Has it been any easier, any harder? Yeah. Um, you know, it's been both. Can I it's been both. I um I have been really creatively inclined, which I know that's not true for a lot of authors during the pandemic. Um, but I've been really driven and I found some concepts that I have loved and I've kind of followed down that path. Uh, that being said, there have been hard days where I don't write at all, where, um, everything has felt, all the outside things have felt really heavy. Um, so I just try to give myself some grace and time and let those things kind of move through me and, um, and get back to work the next day as best I can. Yeah, I think it's just like it's a it's an ebb and flow. Like there's a lot going on. You're still like you still have to show up and do work and be a mom and do all these different things at the same time. Like you know, it's a lot, a lot going on. So it's okay. I think it's great that you got some creative juices. Like you know, that's been really nice. Yeah, the mom thing has also helped a lot too because you really don't have a choice. Like (laughs) your tiny humans need things. You can't stay in bed for days at a time. Um, so they've been a good, like, motivating factor for me. Yeah, I think they might just take you outside of your comfort zone. Like, okay, I need to be fed. I need to play. I need to yeah. Play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it makes sense. And you got two of them. So, <laughs> yeah. So that's awesome. So let's chat about Tokyo Raptor. So, first off, what is the elevator pitch? Uh, so it's been described as crazy rich Asians meets the princess diaries. Yes, and I can agree. It's, it's <laughs> so it's a 17 year old um, girl who discovers that her dad was a prince in Japan. And then she discovers this world in Japan. Yeah. So it's Azumi Tanaka, who's our protagonist, and she lives in a mostly white uh, Northern California town, a very small town, Mount Chasta. And she lives with her single mom. Mm-hmm. And Izumi, or Izzy as she goes by, has always wondered about her father and where she comes from. And then with the help of her tech savvy best friend, she discovers her father's identity. And spoiler alert, he is the crown prince of Japan, uh, which means that Izumi is a princess. Um, And what follows is Izumi's journey to Japan to meet her father and explore the country that she's always dreamed of. Uh, But of course, of course, there are lots of complications along the way. Um, 
the main one is Izumi's struggle, feeling as if she's caught between America and Japan, mm -hmm. um, both of which she doesn't really truly feel a part of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the identity issue, like just coming to terms like who you are as a person. And it's like, I think when you're when you're teenagers, like it's like, it feels more heightened the emotion. Like it feels like, okay, how, where do I belong? And I think the question of belonging is like big one. And like the question about like, you know, she's like going to this place and fish out of water and expect yeah. and being expecting to act certain ways, you know? Um, yeah. So there's the Japanese American element of that, you know, not feeling American or Japanese enough. But I also think what you say is true that there's a universal theme of adolescence and figuring out who you are and where you belong um, and who you're going to become. Mm -hmm. And let's chat about the friendships because I feel like that's like, such a fun aspect of the, you know, because it's like, yes, there's romance and yes, there's stuff, but the reality is the friendships were kind of like the cornerstone. Like, her friends, like, they, 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 they're Google savvy, they figure out who the identity yeah. is based on breadcrumbs, they're, like, have their back, and it's, like, it's definitely, like, I feel like that, that added the emotion of it, so. Yeah, I, um, some of the, I mean, the friendships are inspired by my true life friendships, mm -hmm. um, just a group of really strong girls that support each other. And um, I wanted Izumi to have that. I thought it was important for her to have strong friendships and also a strong relationship with her mom mm -hmm. because that really allowed her to take this big risk where she goes to Japan and she meets her father. I think without that net, uh, she would have been more hesitant to explore this other world, this other part of herself. Yeah, her mom was really cool. <laughs> so yeah. I love her mom. And I love the dad. I love like he was like, you know, awkward with Dewey. Like it's still, but it was just like fun. Like the mom was like so cool. Like I was like, I want to have her own my mom. I love my mom, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like mom balls, you know. They have a really special uh relationship. And um yeah, like I said, I wanted to keep those relationships very steadfast because I wanted Azumi to be able to focus on what she wanted to focus on, which was finding her identity. So the chat about the book, it's mostly, it's somewhat sad in Japan. Um, did you go to Japan to figure out or was it just like, just a experience like, you know? Um, so for research for the book, I wasn't able to go to Japan. Um, unfortunately, I would have loved to. I'm planning a trip, I think spring 2022. Keep your yeah. fingers crossed, we'll see what travel looks like then. But um, I have friends, I have family in Japan that helped me um, get all of the detail work right and all of the detail work about the Imperial family. Um, so that probably was like the most challenging part of the novel was writing those scenes, especially the initial ones when Izumi is first in Tokyo and just getting all those details right, like what highway she drove down and the route that she took to get to the Imperial Palace. Like I was all over Google Maps, like tracing like myself uh, through downtown Tokyo into the Imperial Palace. I love this. Yeah, I thought it was like, so, it felt like an escape. Like for me, that like, it was like it travel. Like we haven't been able to travel in a couple of years. And it's like, it's just like a really nice escape to just be like, oh, I can go to Japan. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, that armchair traveling is very important right now. Yes, it is. So what are you working next? Uh, so Izumi is going to be back next year. Uh, we're going to see her again in Tokyo Dreaming. Uh, she is now, I'm actually finishing revisions on this book. So she is fully ensconced in palace life. Um, I can't say too much. I don't want to give away any spoilers, but yeah. it's so going to be excited. fun life. <laughs> I'm excited. We're going to get another book. Just like. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Like, I mom is going to come and her stinky dog is going to be in Tokyo. It's, it's going to be great. <laughs> oh, this is so great. This is like for for listeners to come and pick up Tokyo after. This is like, if you're looking for a good escape from stress and anxiety, this is like your perfect read to just, to just dive into it. So. I'm excited. And I'm excited for book two. Like now I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta wait. <laughs> so I had a question. I this is a book recommendation show. So have you read any books that you recommend? Like some it doesn't have to be from those backlist, it can be any book. Um, 
that you read and you're like, you know, people should read this or should pick up. Yeah. So I'm working my way right now through Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Hong. It's a, it's a compilation of essays. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so great. Uh, it's a really beautiful work, a book. It's fairly intense. So I kind of take tiny bites of it. I just finished uh, Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boley. Mm-hmm. And I might be butchering her last name. So I apologize uh, if I am. But um, it is a YA thriller and amazing and uh, mm-hmm. edge of your seat. Uh, and also so, so beautifully written. It is so good. I read this book. It's, yeah. just, so, it's like just such an escape, <laughs> you know, yeah. like it, I think it's just where I'm looking. My re- my 2021 reading is like, can it be an escape? Can you just yeah. take the world? <laughs> right now. Uh-huh. You know, so um, tell us where you can find you online. Um, I am on Instagram at Emiko Jean Books and you can find me on my website, emikojean.com. Awesome. And I'm going to read. Oh, thank, thank you, Amika, for being on the show. Yeah, thank you. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For book recommendations, author interview archives, and other fun book resources and tips, please visit watchreadnextblog.com. The Watch Read Next podcast is part of the Frolic Network. To discover new shows to listen and love, please visit frolic.media slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.